Southern Cape, one of the most beautiful parts of South Africa, with its world-famous garden route, hosts the South African Rally Championship for the first time in 17 years. The Otaniqua forests in the mountains surrounding the town of Neisner are a natural playground for the adventurous and adrenaline junkies, but the area also offers a range of other activities. Nestled between the Otaniqua Mountains and the Indian Ocean, Neisner is a preferred holiday destination for anyone looking for sun, sea, fun and games, making it the ideal host for the sixth round of the 2011 South African Rally Championship. This week, action from the two-wheel drive category. Before we get into that, we're going to catch up with some of our stars on the South African Rally Championships, Leroy Poulter and Mark Cronier. You know, we've worked together uh, and we've been friends for a long time. We've, we've, we've been away and, and it's just it shows that we've, we've brought it into racing and we've been competitive through our lives really from uh, age of eight years old and right the way through now and we're still battling against each other. Started off with, uh, as a very young age, nagging my dad to literally go and watch uh, some karting and um, my dad eventually buckled at the knees and we got involved with a little bit of indoor karting initially. And uh, before we knew it, we, we both had two junior GP carts and off we went to Swartkos for the first time. I started on two wheels um, with my family, um, been in racing for many years, uh, obviously wanted, to, wanted me to get involved. We won three uh, national championships with the bikes. And in the fourth year, I was um, doing really well and fell and broke my knee quite badly and uh, my mother stopped everything then, then and then and said to me, you better do something safer. And we started off at karting. I did uh, the world finals uh, four times before actually winning it. Gavin won it in the first year, which was quite an achievement. It was an inspiration for me to look up to. And um, the best part of it was I won the South African round, which I couldn't have asked for anything better. I mean, I, I still won't forget those feelings, you know, driving around that circuit. I could literally hear the people on the last lap, you know, going ballistic. And then I went and did it in 2008 at, uh, in the Italy Le Conca circuit. That's where we've, we've both won. And I think, you know, I think both guys winning, it just shows that, uh, you know, I think once you've won in a kart, you can win in anything else. I was very fortunate um, at that stage already to have Toyota on board. Um, they decided to put me into Group N Racing, um, a very small class I started in, Class F. Again, going up against Leroy, Leroy was sponsored by uh, the Opel um, brand at that stage. There was a, a stepping stone to, to move up through the ladder, which the manufacturer supported us. And it just showed from Carty, nothing changed. We both were at each other in, in Class F, which was, I think I was 16 then, and, and he was probably 17, which both we were young and, and trying to learn the ways around it. We were both very close and competitive. They gave me an opportunity to go off-road racing, I think Leroy carried on production cars at that stage and the off-road really worked well for me. I think uh, it suited me more than any of the other sort of driving styles and um, in my first year I finished I think second overall. I almost won the overall championship in a class E bucky. It shook the off-road fraternity so hard that they literally changed the rules in that year. Now I moved in onto to off-road racing from there with, uh, with Nissan. Um, and it showed it was really good. I, I won, I think it was four year, races that year and had a lot of, uh, a lot of incidents, but we, I think the experience gained was, was what we needed to for rallying. This is where we are today. You know, we, we started out, first of all, in A6, which we won literally every race, and then A7, again, winning everything in that front. And then I got the opportunity to drive alongside Surge just for one or two races in the S2000. And, um, Right from the outset, I think uh, we showed that we were going to be a force to, to be reckoned with. Then we moved to the, the bigger class this year, and you know, Mark is there again, and, and it just shows each rally we, we're on each other's uh, case all the time. Um, you know, he's had a really good season up until now, and um, he's been there a little bit longer than me, but we've, we've learned a lot, and I think into the future we'll will be there with him. Absolutely, we're going to go hammer and tongs. I think it's, uh, I think we, we built for each other, so we're going to be batting heads all the way through our career. Recapping the S2000 category, Conrad Rotenbach came into the Garden Route Rally leading the championship, but suffered from brake problems and dropped his second after finishing fifth. 
Charles Wilkin had a nightmare with numerous mishaps, resulting in his second consecutive non-finish. Achen Fekken's rally lasted only three stages before damage caused an engine failure. Enzo Kuhn played the numbers game, electing not to push too hard, while Johnny Gemmel tried to chase down early leader Marc Renier. Jan Habich hit a log, retiring due to the resultant damage to his rear suspension. Uh, which left John Williams nowhere to go but into that same log. Kuhn and navigator Guy Hodgson held third for most of the events, but eventually dropped to fourth behind Leroy Polter and Elvin Fixier, who finished on the podium behind Johnny Gemmel and Drew Starrock in the leading Castrol Toyota Aurus. With Mark Renier and Robin Houghton racking up their third consecutive victory to go to the top of the point standings. We'd like to thank all our associate sponsors for bringing us highlights of the 2011 Garden Route Rally. Cold, wet conditions greeted competitors at the start in George, which meant some tough choices had to be made. It's very awkward today, especially with the inclement weather. We've changed to mud tyres, a lot of guys have stayed on dry tyres. It's a bit of a gamble because of the uh, puncture issue, but we're going to have to go for it. We're going to have to try and go for a win. I'm paired with Hilton in this event, and it's a bit scary. We've never been here before, and the roads are quite tricky, So, but I'm sure we're going to be fine because he's very experienced, and I'm sure he'll keep it together for us. Leading the field off the ramp, Chad Koradi and Kez Naidu in the Silverton Engineering Toyota Aurus. They've had two second places and three non-finishes so far this season. Christoph and Celeste Snyder is next in their fourth Wagon Polo, currently lying in joint second position in the championship. And Ashley Hakesmith and James Aldridge in the Castrol Ford Fiesta, already with one win behind their name. We start our coverage on stage number two, the MTO Berg Class number one, a 23.13 kilometer stage. Very muddy, tyre choice is going to be key here. And most of the guys starting out on the dries. John Parati coming into the stage first on the road, currently in ninth position after the first stage. He's got a deficit of 12.3 seconds to make up. Just working his way into it and obviously feeling out the conditions. Snader's a very consistent duo as well. They will just be easing their way into the rally. Ashley Egg Smith won the first stage, so he's effectively leading the rally coming into the stage. Guy Bottrell and Skulk Van Heerden in the Yato Tools Toyota. A good start to the rally as well, a third place in the first stage. They would go on to win stage number two. Morna Janssen van Rensburg, currently lying in sixth position after stage one. This is a very impressive youngster. He's made her some good drive so far this season. Can we see another one here? Had some problems on the stage where he went through a water splash and the entire footwell filled with water, so wet shoes for the rest of the day. Talking about problems, uh, Gugu Zulu getting a puncture in this stage, losing about a minute and a half, but it's good to see him in action again. Perfect start to the rally for Craig Trott and Robbie Kutzia. They would go two for two, two second places on stage one and two. Stefani Hugo Buota. And uh, she's also losing some time in the stage. One minute, 48 seconds off the pace. So hard to feel out these conditions on this rally. Chris and Franz de Witt, the father and son duo, keeping it in the family and trying to get those championships that they know they're capable of. The impressive young Henk Ladegan, leading class S1400, lying eighth overall after stage one. And he would go a remarkable 22 seconds only slower than Guy Bottrell. Megan Villark and Hilton Ofray finding their way through their new partnership. Paul Hendrik Franken and Uwe Pei in their Toyota Corolla. Well, they're still finding their feet going about two minutes slower than the pace. Dolph Kutzia and Henry Adams running in the 1300 Toyota Taz, homologated to run in the 1400 class. He knows his way around this car. I'll tell you that, he's been in it for a long time. So Guy Bottrell takes the stage win to take the lead in the rally. He's 5.3 seconds faster than uh, Craig Trott in the stage ahead of Conradi. Look at Latakhan, only 22 seconds off the pace. Stage number three is going to be beer flay number one, 18.86 kilometers. Very fast and flowing track, and the guys should have some kind of setup on their car by now. Expectant crowds all around the stages. Conradi and Naidu currently lying in third position, 17 seconds off the pace. And they would set a benchmark time of 17 minutes, 17.4 seconds. He went on to say this was a very scary, dangerous stage for him, and the brakes certainly took some strain towards the end. Pushing very hard there, Christoph Snyders, but he will be losing some time there. He's currently lying in seventh position overall, along with his uh, sister in the hot seat, Celeste. The higher shock settings not working for him on this fast stage. Ashley Hagsmith developing on pace, getting much faster through this stage, but still battling with the tyre problems. Guy Bottrell and Skalk van Heerden currently leading the rally. They have a margin of uh, just under five seconds to, to defend. 
And they would go fastest by 23.2 seconds. Pushing the pace and getting dangerous out there, but taking chances is what it's all about. Morning, Jens van Rensburg still a little bit off the pace as well and struggling for traction. Trot and Kutsia on their uh, wet weather tyres, doing pretty well, lying second at the moment in the stage. And they would go fourth fastest. Rock solid start to the rally. Chris Devitt and his son France still just easing into the uh, required pace. Of course, uh, Chris, a multiple former champion in class A6 and A7. The Q8 Oils polo of Henk Lodekhan says he couldn't push on the stage, he's dictated to by the conditions. Kai Bottrell takes his second consecutive stage victory to uh, stretch that lead in this stage ahead of uh, Morning Janssen van Rensburg. We caught up with the drivers at their first chance to get some work done on the cars. Battling to find the pace. We haven't done a lot of stages uh, in the past three rallies. So we, we, we're trying to find out what the pace is. It's a bit more difficult with the, with the slippery conditions. So we're taking it easy at this stage. Ashley, just not on the pace today. No, no, struggling a bit. Uh, it probably took the wrong tyre gamble, but um, we had what we had. So now I think we can improve in the last two day stages and maybe tomorrow and give it a good some good bit. Yeah. Stage four is going to be a hard stage to end the day on. MTO Karatara one, 18.22 kilometers. Jatoradi and Kez Naidu still first on the road, but lying in third position overall, 40 seconds off the pace. Question is, are they satisfied with that or do they want to close that gap? Snaders smooth and steady as always. Really no flash in the pan this morning as well. They'll do all their work on day number two when they can get those wet tires on. Ashley Eggsmith and James Aldridge just under a minute off the pace after some early problems. And they are trying to get back on top. Just to show how hard conditions are as well. Out on the trails, it's going to be all mud and in the forest. A little bit of rocks to deal with as well. Very hard conditions to get around. Rally leaders, Bottrell and Van Heerden, they have a gap of 33.2 seconds to defend. But they go slowly in this stage. Jens van Rensburg coming off a second place in the previous stage. He would push hard, but only be rewarded with a fifth on this one. Also pushing hard, Guga Zulu and Karl Peskin in the DP Volkswagen Polo, currently in ninth position overall. And they would go second fastest on the stage. Been complaining about down on power because of an exhausting gearbox problem. This time it worked for him though. Second in the standings behind Bottrell and Van Heerden. That's Craig Trott and Robbie Kutsia. 33.2 seconds down at this point in the team total Toyota Ranix. Stephanie Hugo Boerta and Angela Shields been really battling today with the conditions. And on this stage, unfortunately, it would be the end of their rally. Chris and Franz de Witt currently two minutes off the pace. Latekhan and Jordan still comfortably leading class S1400. Punches out on the stage for Latekhan and then helping a down driver. It was this driver, Verloc. Both of those drivers losing out by over 10 minutes on the stage. Great to see some chivalry amongst the competitors. And clearly it was a good idea to bring the rally to this, e to this area. After an absence of 17 years, people are enjoying it. Christoph and Celeste Snaders take their first stage win of the rally by 4.2 seconds, ahead of a resurgent Guguzulu. And for the overnight rest, the teams converge on the Samola Golf Estate. There's a lot of guys that um, made a wrong tyre choice today, Wednesday on the dry tyres. They're obviously going to be on the wet weather tyres tomorrow, so they'll be chasing. So I think tomorrow's going to be a lot harder than it was today. We had a danger right eight, and um, you know I just went in way too fast and I drove up a bank. Uh, we were very lucky just to get a punch at the end of the day um, and got it back. But uh, we had 10 k's still to go of the stage, so I drove 10 k's with a with a flat wheel, which was quite scary. Uh, but we made it to the end. Um, you know, the other guys took a lot of time off me, but uh, the Snaders made a bit of a mistake uh, clocking in, so that helped me out a bit. And I think uh, overnight I'm lying second at the moment. Confirmation of that overnight. Craig Trot and Robert could see a lead guy Bottrell and Scott from Yedon by just over 10 seconds. Ashley Egg Smith and James Aldridge in third. The big story coming into the overnight stop is the fact that the Snaders siblings made a mistake clocking in and they've been penalised, dropping down to sixth place.